Hi, welcome back to Hamalus. It's finally spring. <laughs> I am so excited. It is nowhere near time to be planting things out in my zone. <sighs> um, we are starting. People who live near me and who have southern exposure might be lucky enough that some of their very dead grass is now visible as the snow recedes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my garden is snow. Everything is snow. <laughs> I'm... Yeah, everything is snow outside, but inside things are happening. I don't know if you can still hear it in my voice. I think I am getting closer to being all the way back to 100%. But <laughs> I have, I'm just recovering from a really just prolonged sinus infection. It, it was nasty and uh, it left me without a voice and honestly without any energy to use my voice anyway. So uh, yeah, sorry it's been a while since I've made a video, but uh, also sorry to my plants because they got a little too big. <laughs> uh, so I let's pot up some plants, but yes, I know that some of them they were a little overdue. Uh, one of the reasons though why I don't pot up my tomatoes right away is because every year I forget, forget just what a pain it is to have the tomatoes with the peppers like in the same tray because the peppers grow slower but also if I just take the lid off so that the tomatoes can get some air and have a little more room to grow and then uh, historically, what has happened in the past, is that a little mouse has come along and eaten my pepper plants. Just my pepper plants. Um, even when they're about the same size, they just love pepper. So, so I've got a spicy mouse, and so that means I need to protect the pepper plants. <laughs> uh, it's, it's so dumb. Um, although I don't know that the spicy mouse is still around because they have not messed with my arrow garden but they also just might not really have found it so i don't know today i'm going to show you how i pot up my tomatoes um it's i use this i'm using the same mix that i use for soil blocking but i add a little special ingredient and <laughs> i talked about it in my last video about the tomatoes but I use a special container to pot them up into that will mean that this is the last time that they'll be potted up until it's time for them to go outside. So they get potted up one time and then they're in that little pot until June maybe. We'll see what the weather does this year. <clears throat> and another, another thing that I'm doing this year, I'm changing up my seed blocking recipe. Um, people who do seed blocks like when they first start, like, oh, I've got to get my recipe right to sort of like say, wow, this is not as easy as I thought it would be. And I don't know if this is great, but soil blocking is a mixed bag. It's pretty great because your plants go into the ground and they're, it's pretty easy for them to transition into, into it. And you're not using all of that uh, plastic, that, like those little plastic pots that are likely to get broken. Um, it's good for that. Um, it does sometimes frustrate sometimes frustrate you. Uh, I am new this year to the mini blocker. Uh, I usually use the four blocker, which is like the normal like little the little round dibber. Um, I had no idea where that went. So this year I'm using a mini blocker and then a bigger blocker with like the square in it, which is a bit much for the tomatoes. That was a bit much extra, but it works really well for potting up. So I'll show you that. I never told you what I was talking. Okay. This year I'm changing up my soil blocking recipe because the perfect soil blocking recipe is like coconut core or peat if you're fine with that. I try to avoid peat. Um, coconut core and perlite or vermiculite. I don't know how much it matters. Uh, I'm not an expert. I've done a lot of research and uh, it's just not really consistent anything. But you need a little something to give it a little more um space like a little more breathability um so coconut core 
Perlite is what I use. I use per coconut core and perlite. And then you sh they want you to use a compost. I think compost is good for making it nice and sticky. I think you get a better shaped block if you use compost, but I am not using compost. And I'll tell you why. I'm not using compost because I find that compost is very similar to soil in that it brings in bugs and uh, I'm trying to avoid having bugs in my growing area as much as I can because once all of my little seedlings are out in the garden thriving in the sun, I want to expand my hydro garden down there. So we're keeping it uh, soil free in the basement. The other reason why I don't want to use compost is because I am terrified of getting jumping worms. It's, yeah, it's been a big, a big limiting factor these last few years is just terrified that if I go to a store and I get a bag of compost or I get a bag of topsoil or anything, or even a bag of mulch, I will be bringing home jumping worms. If I buy this plant from someone, then I might be getting jump, jumping worms. So like when I, when I am bringing in plants, I'm very careful to clean off all the soil and to make sure that that doesn't get into my garden. But it also has meant that I haven't bought compost or topsoil for the last few years. And yes, I do make my own compost, but I used up all my compost when I did some garden work in the fall. So what I have right now is not ready yet. So yeah, we're not using compost because we don't have compost and because it might bring in lots of flies. And honestly, I don't know if I can like celebrate yet. It's probably a bit too early to celebrate because everything's frozen outside. Uh, but so far, no bugs, which is amazing. Um, once everything thaw th starts thawing out outside and the bugs start coming back to life, they might, they might find us but where none of them are starting in my garden. So, yay. Uh, yeah, so yeah, having a soil-free growing area, pretty good. <laughs> and what I've done to make up for not having the nutrients of the compost is that I have been watering them, um, not every time that I water them, but sometimes that I water them, throw in a little liquid fertilizer to give them just a little more little more nutrients to keep them going because it's a long time till planting in the ground. So what I, I'll, let's flash back and I'll show you what I did. Just for the tomatoes, I'm gonna add a bunch of eggshells to give them a little extra calcium. Should probably grind this up more, but I don't really feel like it. Tomatoes are very overdue for potting up, but uh, I have been very sick and today is the first day I've been so humid enough to maybe try. I don't know what's going on with these spoon tomatoes. The leaves are so curly and they've got like a weird weirdness on them. I don't know, I've never grown them before. They're a free seed. Just everything else looks healthier, like they're definitely going to benefit from being potted up. But I don't know about those spoon tomatoes. Now, oh, I'm just gonna dump most of this out. Undo all of my work, because I was not planning on how, just how. 
just how badly these need to be potted up. Okay. What you can do with tomato plants, get rid of those, is tomato plants, see, they have like all these, get you better, they have lots of hairs. Uh, if you bury these, if these get in the ground, they will turn into roots. So, for tomato plants, we're gonna just. in nice and deep and so then it's going to have a lot of good strong roots when it's time for it to go into the ground there nice and happy this mortgage lifter tomato did not make it into a soil block the seed fell to the side and it sprouted so i could probably still plant it and it would be okay but i have more than enough of these so i don't think we're going to waste uh our time with this poor tomato, I'm sorry. I don't know, I might change my mind if I have enough space, but we'll prioritize the ones that are gonna do really well for us. way too wet. I overcompensated because I've been so sick so I dumped a bunch of water in there. <laughs> it's a little too much. Um, but we're just going to gently tease these apart and they're going to be fine. We have still the old seed leaves on here. We don't need them so we'll take them off so we can go a little deeper. Okay. core and perlite and with the coconut core I thought I was the first couple of years I used it I thought I was being clever and uh, buying it from a pet store instead but it's got more of a chemical smell from a pet store I think it probably has something to suppress growth so you're gonna want to splash out on the garden stuff and uh, it it absorbs the water faster if you use hot water so those are my coconut core tips <laughs> And for some reason, this batch has had a couple of little rocks in it. Um, but let's see. Uh, I'll add a little liquid fertilizer to this. Um, I don't think I really want to add much more water. Uh, because this is about, about as wet as we want it. It could go a little bit wetter, but not much. All right. Now I'm going to use my big blocker, and this one has the squares in it for putting the mini blockers into it, um, partly because I don't, yeah. I lost my one with the little nibs, but I am actually going to try to pot up the tomato, not, not the tomatoes, the flowers, like that. So I like to feel to make sure it's actually in and flatten that out a bit. Yay. So I, it's not quite sticky enough. Um, I might have to stem it with something else to add in the future, but let's put our zinnias here.
and now it's been a few days. I think that was like Thursday and it's now Tuesday, so it's it's been it's been enough time. Let's check on check in on the plants and see how they're doing. I have a few more things that I want to pot up uh, in the next few days. I think I want to plant a bunch of marigolds and a bunch of um, a bunch of perpetual spinach uh, chard. That's what I said. Chard. Uh, I honestly I have so many things in the greenhouse. Um, and if they all survive and do well, I will have way too many greens, but that's okay. Uh, also, uh, I don't know. Uh, we've had a few freezes. I'm a little bit worried. And not so much about the kale, because I know that that's gonna be, you know, kale is kale. I am a bit worried about the peas that I planted. They sprouted and then they froze, and I'm gonna keep an eye on them to see if when it warms up, they continue to sprout or they just, rot. Um, I think they might rot, so that's okay. If we plant peas straight into the ground, that's fine. Just need to make sure that we do something to keep the freaking mice away from them. Okay, let's go check out the plants. So, most of the tomatoes look pretty good and pretty happy. Uh, the spoon tomatoes still don't look great. I think they might just be an unhappy tomato. <laughs> I don't think they're a happy one. And then we've got uh, this guy back here who's also not doing too great. I think that might be, I don't know what their problem is, but that's okay. If we lose, if we lose some, we'll still have way too many tomatoes. So that's not a big deal. Um, I put it, I put it, I was think I was gonna say potted, but I planted uh, some, sowed some seeds in these empty ones here, and then these are all looking pretty happy. These are flowers I don't remember right now, and I, that sun's a little out far away. But these are all looking pretty happy. Probably about ready for me to take off the domes. And then, I think these are my straw flowers, and then the peppers here. I just cut one of the milk containers in half and uh, I think it works really well for things that are a little less root intense than the tomatoes. So everything so far is looking pretty happy. And then here, I don't, oh no that's so dry, yeah. The problem with the mini ones that I'm having is <laughs> I don't know how to uh, I don't think they do very well in this because the water just moves them around and destroys them. Ooh, look at the little herbs coming along. Tarragon still hasn't done anything. That's okay. I don't know that uh, that was the best way to start any of the herbs. We just kind of did it. So, so far things are growing. We've got plenty, <laughs> plenty of cabbage coming along. So I'm gonna repot these up soon, but I don't know that I'll take you along for that. And then out here we have, well, it was like a little Ikea greenhouse cover. I think now they just cover it, call it a cover, which is fine because it's not really a greenhouse. But uh, we've just got this little cover on this shelf and it gives us a little extra protection. Um, I think the way to go, because it's still not very much protection, is still to use a dome. And then with the two layers, then you can, it's, that's the way that I sort of am trying winter sowing. With the two layers, it kind of works. Uh, this was really dry. I watered, but I think I overwatered. I'm really having a hard time figuring out how to get water to all the little mini blocks. So that's something that I am working on. Um, but we have some of these sprouting. And uh, with this plus what I have in the basement is going to be way too much. So that's fine. Um, Whatever we have extra for the greens, like kales and all that, we can just plant in the chicken area and we'll just eat it. So, but what I am concerned about is these peas. Yeah, I don't think I have high hopes for the ones that have already sprouted. They're looking a little, 
a little unhappy. Um, but I think maybe like some like these that are still kind of starting to come up, they might be okay. We're gonna have a good long run where we're getting up up into the 40s, like 50s for a week. So hopefully that's just gonna go up and up. And then, yeah, they don't get as much sun down here, but I have more, more cabbage. That's okay, I have cabbage in the basement. A lot of things I have in the basement as well. I'm just experimenting. So kind of not expecting these to do well because winter sewing and I, we don't get along, but we're trying. This is what I have outside. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I'm not, not too sure that we're gonna get anything from it, but we're gonna try and that's, that's what we do. We try. All right, thank you so much for watching. See you next time, bye.